FCI Center in Washington, D.C. Todd McCullough making his mark today. There are some other Canadians who have fared well in American college basketball. Here's from Leo Routenberg. Churches and a good friend and one of the first. He went on to the NBA and might have had a fine career were it not for knee injuries. Bill Weddington has had a, an extended run in the NBA. And Steve Nash, the most recent notable from north of the border. And Mike Schreck played with the Lakers. Uh, Steve, very well thought of. Value possession of the Phoenix Suns right now. I got a kick out of Donald Watts talking about just playing with a one center offense. How about the smile on his face? He's glad Beverly's on the bench. Particularly, his ability to dribble is now complimented. So when the two seven footers played together, there just wasn't much room to get into the lane. Now that they play one seven footer at a time, Watts can slice the basket as can his teammate. Looks and hits a three. Now well, the inside punch has opened it up. They just can't jam it up on the big guy. Luton has five three-pointers, 16 points in the game. He's a streaky shooter and on a hot streak in this tournament for the University of Washington. Stevenson forced to pull up by Luton and a good shoot by Gerard Stevenson. He has 17 points. Once again, that Philly isolate for him. Washington by 11. Green, the lob. McCullough, that's just as easy as can be. Eric Poole's trying hard. Well, he's a guy who played power forward for the last few years for Richmond. Moved to center this season. It's six feet, eight inches tall. John Beeline tells him to play defense with his feet first, but he's having a tough time getting around in front of McCullough. And when he does, they lob it over his head. And there's your foul again. Say, look, Reed, he's got McCullough helping. But the wonderful thing about this particular play, Sean, his spin-out ability. He's going to get right around. Look at this. The lob, the catch in traffic, and pull at such a size disadvantage. But he's starting to understand how to get himself free. Todd McCullough. Alvin Thalo Green was his third. Two team fouls on Washington in this half. Both called against Green. Darrell Oliver traveling. A little out of sync. Yes. Uh, John's uh, a little concerned because the offense hasn't been smooth and not enough touches for Gerard Stevenson. Other than that isolation, get him in the game. Baylo Green from Salem, Oregon, former Oregon High School Player of the Year. Down the lane, McCullough tips it in. And all the defense over to help. Poole's got to stick it in there and contain the big fella. Well, he is 24 today. You wonder what his numbers might be if he played on the team in the Colonial Athletic Association. His career high is 38 points last season in a game at James Madison, a member of the same league as the Richmond Spiders. That's a tough commute, though, from Winnipeg. <laughs> Folks moved a little closer and watched one of those terrific handlers. Good penetration and feel for the game. It's the lineage. Donald Watts, the son of Slick Watts, former standout with the Seattle Supersonics in attendance here today. Poole got a hand on that pass as he fronted McCullough, and it still found McCullough in the low post. Well, green, blue, whatever color you want, Thalo, the ability to turn the corner, the name selected by his dad, the painter, and Todd McCullough in position because all the defense attracted to green, who comes from that right to left side beautifully to his dominant hand. Number 50, Todd McCullough. The foul is on Gerard Stevenson, his second. Three team fouls against Richmond in the half. Washington trying to make it to the Sweet 16. Oh, the first time, 1984, when they beat Nevada Reno in the first round and Duke in the second round. And Bob Bender, now the Washington head coach, was an assistant coach to Mike Krzyzewski at Duke when the Huskies beat the Blue Devils. They go to the Sweet 16 and they lost to Dayton. Post up for Stevenson. Look at the big guy right there. Stevenson fouled a chance for a three-point play as he was hit on the arm by Dion Luton, who was called for his first personal. And Sean, this is the same play they've been running to give him a one-on-one. -on -one. This time, Stevenson ducks in. He's got good post position to turn, and it's smart enough to feed back as McCullough is looming. He just understands where to be. I thought he should have put his hand up, too. He's tall enough to deter. Stevenson didn't get the bounce. Pool tipped it in. Eric Poole. A 
Turns out to be a four-point play for Richmond. Ten points in the game for Fool, who averages 11 and a half, and Richmond is within 12, made it 14, and McCullough has 27 points. And that was a pretty slick move by Donald Watts. The ability in the open floor, the hands ready by McCullough. Washington 57, Richmond 43, 12-20 remaining in the second half. Marseille Brown, off glass, no good, McCullough, the rebound. Hey, he could have jumped over the Saturday edition of the Daily News there. He didn't get up real high, but the wingspan got him the rebound. McCullough has 14 rebounds now. Fouls on Daryl Oliver, his third. Team's fourth. Four team fouls against Richmond. Not a bad game with 12.06 still to be played. He's starting to look like he's got some more confidence. He's cutting to the basketball. Here he comes again. Starting to get a little greedy. He was not at all a highly recruited player in Winnipeg. He played in a tournament last summer down in Phoenix just before his senior year. And he was really a standout before he got back home to Winnipeg. The answering machine was full of messages from college recruiters. Jonathan Baker, the strip and the layup at the other end and Richmond remains within 12. By the time he got to Phoenix he was rising. <laughs> at least by the time he got home from Phoenix. <laughs> he had indeed risen. He goes right back to the box. Green missed a short one. McCullough. What a form Sean. I mean his knowledge of the game he turns faces when there's a little move gets his body on the defender just for that little tip back. Almost seems unfair. <laughs> He's making it so easy. Marseille Brown down the lane. Dished it off. Oliver was fouled. Counted a chance for a three-point play. And you know what's frustrating? You said it's unfair. Marseille Brown is trying to get in at him. He doesn't get his body on the offensive man. So he spread. Here he gets a piece of the basketball. And this is one, maybe he gets a little body underneath, but he influences and changes. He causes you to hurry your release. And it's the first foul on McCullough. For all of his activity inside, just one foul called on Todd. Darrell Oliver finishes the three-point play. 11 minutes in the inning. The Washington Huskies lead by 11. By one, but Illinois doing the little things. They sure are. Johnson with a good step across. Brian Johnson, 34, stays put, and then establishes just a slight bit of interior positioning. But the read good, the reaction good, and just like that, Illinois is back in this. Johnson's younger brother, Lucas, has committed to Illinois for next year. Gary Williams trying to get his team to commit to playing some better defense. 14 to 4, Illinois has outscored Maryland over the last four plus minutes. One point game. The belief in yourself is there for Illinois. Rodney Elliott, the flip. Good find by Stokes. He got lost up in the air for a moment. Elliott, a big target down low with moving without the basketball. 16 points for Elliott. Coming off a 21 point, 11 rebound effort in the win over Utah State. First round action. 49 46. Terps. On a crossover. Hester makes his move. Leaning in. Gets the roll of the foul. Hester is starting to take up the slack. Without Turner scoring, Turner's at one for ten. Hester has started to pick up his game a little bit. He's becoming more active. Puts the ball on the floor and strongly gets hit. Brings it down for the double clutch. Terrific concentration. Uh, the Illinois bench is loving every move down there in the offensive end. Third foul on Stokes. 18th foul on Maryland. This is for the tie. First time these two schools have been tied up since 2-2. It's 49-49, seven and a half to play in regulation. Yes, the cabbage has got off to the quick start. Tough shot right there. Look at the rebounding effort. Another four blue jerseys circling, camping it out. That's the way to contend with the largest team. 
Illinois has never left. Shots from the drive. Just don't take many bad shots. Johnson could have taken one there. Turner, you knew he'd hit one sooner or later. A three-pointer, and the fighting Illini lead it by three. When that happens, four guys on the floor consciously think to themselves, our main scorer is back. Stokes, and we're tied. He might be the MVP for Maryland at this point in this basketball game. I don't think anybody, including Lon Kruger, expected him to step up and hit the shot. Ten points for Terrell Stokes on four of seven shooting. 52-52, six and a half remaining on the clock. Good Johnson. Curl. Oh, pretty. Couldn't finish with a left-handed layup. A great curl cut, though, and a terrific switch to the left hand. Down low, Akizi. Off the double. Two-man game. Akizi in the turnaround. Soft touch. Good footwork, too. Held in a factor every time, but he was a touch late getting back. Akizi's first two of the day. 54-52 Maryland. Cross court. Hester lines it up. Can't hit the three. Knocked out of bounds by G. That's the right call, too. He is just amazing, too, going after the basketball. Illinois coming down the floor the last time when they needed a big shot from Turner. They get it. And in Rip City to keep them alive at the offensive end and wake him up a bit. Rodney Elliott pulls the trigger. Johnson with a rebound. A timeout. Eleanor takes a full timeout. Five twenty-eight remaining. Second half. 54 to 52, Maryland clinging to a two-point lead. As it turns, and there are some kisses that'll put you to sleep with a smile on your face, and he's got it. Reason with the whistle, probably the shot clock instead of the 30 seconds. David Hensel comes back in, and Eric Poole goes to the bench. Green. Last touch by Gerard Stevenson. The Huskies will play it in with 26 to shoot. Are you expecting a little zone, a little mix up of the defense, Bobby Bender? And they handle the zone, the man to man. Because this guy's just been able to catch it wherever he wants it. Oh my goodness, he missed a shot. A rare miss by McCullough. Carlos Cueto penetrated. And there was a foul in the pass off against Washington. Alan Jan Wooten. First foul on Wooten. Carlos Cueto has played well. When he comes in, seems everybody gets in the flow a little bit. Nice little bounce pass at the end there. The governor, they call him, to control things. Makes a three that Richmond really needed. And they'll need a few more if they're going to get back into this one. Down by 13 now with 9 10 remaining. Eight points for Jonathan Baker. And right now trying to extend the floor to keep the big fella out of the game. Oh, Stevenson came in to help Hensel. Great help. Stevenson passed up a three, and the runner dropped for Gerard Stevenson. Greg Rumble in New York, the Richmond Spiders trying to play catch up against the Huskies. Still plenty of time, just under nine minutes remaining to be played in the second half there in Washington. We will keep you updated on that, but meanwhile, we're going to take you out west now to Sacramento, to Arco Arena. This is a matchup of number five seed Illinois and fourth seeded Maryland Terrapins. This game has been a back and forth battle. Right now it's 54 52 Turks. Let's join Ian Eagle and Jim Spinarco. Jim Spinarco, Mike Harris, with you from Sacramento, California. 54 to 52. Maryland leading Illinois with 528 to play. Illinois has the ball. Turks have led by as many as 13. Illinois, a terrific job in the second half off the glass. 
And some hard work has gotten them back in the game. Easy reacting that time, coming out to the perimeter against Heldman. G, the jumper. Easy showing you his quickness again coming out to contend with that shot. Laurent Profit, nine points in the first half. He has not scored in the second half. Rodney Elliott. And G picks off the rebound. Once again, the basketball hits the floor. Blue shirts all around it. The tempo definitely favoring Illinois now, even though they're down the bucket. They've taken Maryland out of their game. They sure have. Kevin Turner's been quiet. He's starting to warm it up, though, a little bit. The long-range shot a moment ago from the right side, putting it down on the floor now. Seven points for Turner on three of 12 shooting. We're tied at 54. Watch Hellman now. He'll try to cheat in the middle. You see, smallest guy on the floor, but he's cheating very nicely to double-team, playing just about a one-man zone. Turner came out to guard Profit, and the foul called on the Illinois shooting guard. Second personal. Game summary. All tied up, Maryland and Illinois. Spotting Illini controlling the boards in this second half. Both teams shooting right around 45%. See what Mark held in the middle of the screen. He's defending Stokes. He's going to watch his defensive play now. He helps out the Chief. There he is again. They're going to force Stokes off that. Yes, a Cavalchess. A three. Good rotation away from the basketball, too. Stokes triggering it. Looking for the sets. Big shot for Maryland to get a little confidence back. Yes, a Cavalchess. Four of four from long range. 18 points overall. Hester the pump fake. A little bit out of control. Yeah, a little bit wild. Good aggressive job because he's going towards the basket. And here's the screen away. Tall guy at 6'8 makes the good pass. And watch this rotation. Nothing but the bottom. Chirps lead by three. Stokes on a crossover. Couldn't get it to Elliott, but struck down by Profit. If Hellman's going to play Stokes so far away, Stokes should be able to penetrate or make better passes because it'll be easier. Stokes can't convert on the three. I shouldn't say really penetrate. I mean, dribble the basketball from left to right and make the better pass. We hit the three-minute mark of the second half. 57-54, Maryland. Spotting up the jumper for Turner. A cheesy, the box out. And a whistle. I think they got Hester for the quick grab just then. Unfortunate for Illinois because Akizi would have traveled with the basketball. This is corner jumper. Turner with the stroke. Watch for the grab in. There's the grab. That's a good call from the officials. He would have gotten called for a violation on that play. Second foul on Hester. 14 foul on Illinois. The drive by Stokes. High off the window. Foul was called on the floor. What a blow by by Stokes. He's got Hellman going, shifting back and forth. Gary Williams is up off the bench. There's the grab. That's a good call. It's before it was out even before there. Stokes to three. He's playing. Held in the pump. The jumper. Jared G on the inside. One point game, Maryland in front as we approach two minutes to play in the second half. That was a one-man trip by G going against three Maryland players. 12 points, 13 rebounds for G. Profit gives it up for Elliott. Wow, good call from the officials, a little late. As Hester hit the deck, he's charged with a foul. Here's Helms' shot, a little bit long, but watch G go to work. I mean, this is fun to watch. He misses again. You look at him jump, the spring's going to town. There's a couple of guys who should be contending with him. Akizi, not a factor. Third personal on Hester. Maryland seemingly in control early. 
But Illinois has done a fantastic job getting back into the game and not really doing it with the style that they're accustomed to off the boards. A cheesy, strong move to the rim. And a loose ball foul. The smallest guy in Illinois' squad, Hellman. That's actually a pretty good foul because if Akizi gets that second opportunity, he would have just laid it right back in. Under two minutes left, Akizi going to the free throw line. And on the inbounds, Akizi gets a good look here. Now he gets the basketball. And if he's not fouled, he has a real good opportunity of putting that one away. But instead, you put a 67% free throw shooter on the line. And some encouragement from the bench. One and one situation for Akizi. Must be ready to rebound. If you're Illinois right now, you must think this if you're Maryland. He's been held in check, just two points. Six rebounds. Knocks down the first free throw. Two point lead for Maryland. The Terps upset in the first round in each of the last two years. As Akizi gets the roll on the second attempt. That's good shoot from a big guy at the line. Pressure situation and he responds. 59-56. Terp is leading. Every possession now at both ends of the floor will have an impact on this game. Mid post. Turner defended by Yesikavichis. Turner a three-pointer. Got it! What happened to Turner in the second half? You knew he wasn't going to go away. He's been through so much adversity. What a great step up. All of seven shooting in the first half. Four of seven in the second half. Ten points for Kevin Turner. We're tied at 59. Open a little closer to Stoke also. Off-balance jumper. Tough shot for Yesikavichis. He can rip it, and he can shoot it when he's leaning and floating also. He's been doing it all afternoon. He's got 20. 61 to 59. Maryland. One minute to play. You would expect him to try to get Turner another look. G for the tie. Both teams playing well offensively. They're just running their sets. No matter who's going to step up and defend now for the last minute. Maryland, the four seed. Illinois, the five seed. A packed house there at the Arco Arena in Sacramento. 40 seconds left, all tied up at 61. Akizi. All right, there's a reach. Hellman again, floating through the lane. He doesn't like the call, but it's a good one, I believe. Obina Akizi will go to the strike. Great movement without the basketball. Akizi position. Yep, there's a grab. One and one. Following the Heldman foul. The Illinois bench reacting, as you would expect. Absolutely. And they call the 22nd timeout. Make Akizi think about it a little bit. At the same time, they're going to set up their strategy. Is it 35.2 left in this basketball game? So that we'll talk strategy also. Right now, let's check out the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. It's rebounding, and Illinois has done a terrific job in this second half. Physical under the boards, and they lead the category 36 to 30. Get all your tournament team sortable stats, plus real-time scores, in-depth information, and more at March Mayhem on cbs.sportsline.com. Maryland, the bigger team up front, but Illinois has not backed down. No, they have not, and that's a credit to Lon Kruger, who just said, coming into this game and speaking to him, hey, we've been through the wars in our conference. It's another war on our hands. Let's go play. Big free throw, Obina Akizi. Maryland up by one and a second toss coming. Three punch free throws that he's delivered. Matt Kovarik into the game, replacing Yesikavichis. Will Lonsberger emphasized the blocking out. Have to make sure Illinois blocks out on this particular shot. Akizi. Wow. He's got another. Two-point lead for Maryland. Illinois can hold for one. 
Hester and Turner, two guys who can put the ball on the floor and create. Here's Turner. The winner goes to the Sweet 16. Turner, the jumper. G fighting for it. Loose ball on the floor. Kubara couldn't grab it. Akizi does. And the foul called with 15.6 left. That's the right move to foul right there also. 15.6 seconds left. Kevin Turner is brilliant at floating to his left and shooting. He goes a little bit long. The first half shooting problems resurface on that one shot. Terrific effort. And Akizi just has to bend over and pick up the loose basketball. Third foul on Turner. Akizi. Four for four from the line. Wow. Still a one possession game right now. Second free throw. He can make it a two possession game with 15.6 remaining. Got it. Extraordinary. Just Absolutely fabulous shooting under pressure. 20 second timeout. Maryland takes it. Turks lead it 65 to 61. When you look at brackets and you look at four or five matchups, you knew that Maryland, Illinois had the chance to be a tight one. The question was, could Illinois handle Maryland up front with Elliott at six foot eight and Akizi at six foot ten? Illinois has done an outstanding job, but they have gotten a subpar shooting effort from Kevin Turner, their leading scorer this season. Four of 15 shooting, just 10 points. They still have an opportunity, though, with 15 points, six to play. Want to get it down the floor in a hurry and go to the basket with it initially, but they got to hurry, though, right down the gut. Heldman. G couldn't grab the rebound, and Kovarik is fouled with 7.2 left on the clock. Maryland sensing that this is going to be a difficult one for Illinois to pull out. Heldman did what he was supposed to. Didn't get a good shot off because Akizi was there as the second man in. Nice defensive rebounding job by Sephora. Two free throws for Kovarik. Tenth team foul. And he gets the roll on the first. The Terps maintaining their composure down the stretch. Oftentimes, it will come down to free throw shooting, and that's exactly what's happened today. And Maryland has taken advantage. Come on. Oh, they got the rolls. Great free throw shooting. That's what wins close basketball games down the stretch. Final seconds. Heldman pull up three. Elliott the rebound. And that's going to do it. After a two-year absence, Maryland is going back to the Sweet 16. after getting it. Terrific game in Sacramento where Maryland defeated Illinois 67-61 in Washington, D.C. The Huskies and the Spiders. Let's rejoin Sean and Bill.
Maryland showed you what they're made of. They have a lot of different weapons. All of a sudden, they get down to crunch time. Akizi strokes the basketball from the free throw line. It was a terrific basketball game for both schools. First loss for the Big Ten in this tournament as Maryland wins it over Illinois. Look at the bracket. Maryland moves on. They will meet the winner of Arizona, Illinois State. Our Chevrolet, most valuable players of the game. Jared G for Illinois, 14 points, 13 boards. Sherunas, Yessa Kavichis, 20 points, 4 of 4 from three-point range. 67 to 61. That's the final. Maryland comes out a winner. For Jim Spinarkle and Mike Harris, this is Ian Eagle. Right now, let's send it back to New York. Greg Gumbel. All right, Standing. Ian, thank you. So, for the first time in seven games in this tournament, the Big Ten suffers a loss. Meanwhile, in Boise, Idaho, 13 minutes and change remaining in regulation, and Utah leads Arkansas. Jim Durham and Greg Kelter are calling the action. They even looked elsewhere. And they're cruising up the program. They're renovating the venerable Edmondson Pavilion. Where they've won 735 games in their on-campus arena. They've won more games in their current building than any team in the country, which means it's old. <laughs> well, they've won a lot, too. They have, Mark, indeed. Mark Marshman's years uh, come to mind. Tony Russo. Dick Gow, the drive. Andy Russo, yes. Before you write it down. <laughs> <laughs> Cueto fouled on the drive, and he'll shoot two. Patrick Femmerling committed the foul. Now I'll check out the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. And Washington hoped coming in that it would have a rebounding advantage because of its size, and the Huskies certainly have. Thanks mostly to that man, Todd McCullough. 18 rebounds today. Get all your tournament team sortable stats, real-time scores, in-depth information, and more. March Mayhem on cbs.sportsline.com. Some offensive performance as well. We talked about the rebounding, the blocking up the hole. Just outstanding. Back to that thought that he didn't, he played in the high school league that didn't commit dunking. His touch, I mean, he's got great kiss shots. Getting a little stronger, too. He's going to be able to dominate guys as he Holds on with that off arm. Led the nation in field goal percentage each of the past two seasons. Marseille Brown back in. Carlos Cueto goes out. Of what will be the final game of his career at Richmond. Carlos can now pursue his career ambition to become the mayor of his hometown in Union City, New Jersey. Maybe you can help them. That's my old popular. county, Hudson. Because I don't live there, and I guess the old joke would be I probably could vote anyhow. Tonight on CBS, beginning at 9 Eastern, it's the Magnificent Seven, followed by Walker, Texas Ranger. That's all coming up tonight. Earlier we talked about the one-center concept. Bob Bender decided let's just play one. McCullough being the better offensive player, Femerly, pretty good shot blocker. So a minute 41 remaining at the MCI Center in Washington, D.C. Meanwhile, in Boise, second round West Region action, Utah with a nine-point lead on the Razorbacks of Arkansas. Let's go there live and join Jim Durham and Greg Kelser. Perhaps who it's charged to, the length of it. And Richardson getting an explanation, and now Rick Majerus going over to get one. Well, we've set a record. The longest 20 second timeout in the history of basketball. <laughs> Utah with this nine point lead. Arkansas battling back after trailing by as many as 16 in the first half. Pat Bradley, the leading scorer of the Razorbacks, hasn't scored. He has. Uh, committed four fouls. He's on the bench. The size of Utah has been a, a factor. As you look at Pat Bradley, Metzala, Jensen, Doliak, they've all done uh, a great job inside for Utah. That timeout was a 20-second timeout. 
charge to Utah. Utah <laughs> they just announced <laughs> that it was a 20-second timeout charge to Utah. I don't understand why it took them so long to figure this out. Let's get an explanation. Here's Mike Mayock. Rick Majera thought he had a 20 second left, came out and then decided he didn't, so he said make it a full timeout. Ultimately, he did, so they were kind enough to rescind it. Bottom line is, they have no 20 timeouts left. Arkansas has two. All right, thanks for that explanation, Mike. Ali Thompson to Reed. This is a big possession for Arkansas. What Rick Majera's got was a 20 and a full. Exactly. Nine to shoot. He may have even taken another one. Three on the shot clock. It's a seven-point game. A total breakdown by Kareem Reed. Ball handling lies, got inside, got the penetration, and the kickoff. And was hood with that major league dunk. Doliak open. Rebounded by Hansen. Out front to Miller. Miller hangs one up there. And Thompson skies for the rebound. Well, he jumps like David Thompson. <laughs> you got that right. 12 minutes for regulation. Reed getting to the hoop. Hands it off to Thompson. Reed was fouled on the pass off. Read the ball handler. Gives you a potpourri of moves to get by Miller. Into the heart of the defense to drop off the hood, who finishes brilliantly. And Drew Hansen was called for the foul. If that's on him, that's his fourth. 11.58 left. Don't go away. this site the pavilion at Boise State <laughs> that will be uh, shutting down after this game Utah's lead has been trimmed to seven well, as you're looking at the turnovers Utah six turnovers in the second half you wonder if Arkansas, Arkansas pressure is starting to really wear them down you know that points off turnovers nine zip Razorbacks in this half and they capture a big offensive rebound Gary Hood had to track down the loose ball. Ali Thompson. Wallace. Hood is surrounded. Reed with 13 to shoot. And the rebound to Thompson, and he was out of bounds. The 11 25 for the game utah with a seven point lead it has been a big comeback by arkansas in this second half six utah turnovers have helped arkansas get back into this game champion who's back in hano metala jackson on to miller underneath it's doliak and Jensen was fouled by Derek Hood. Each time that Utah shoots the basketball long, they're getting hurt on the weak side with the rebound. Arkansas not doing a good job of blocking out on the weak side, and Utah's getting several second opportunities. Bradley's coming back into the game. Keep in mind, he has four fouls for Arkansas. More importantly, he has no points. He's their leading scorer. Maybe he will, maybe he will find uh, some scoring opportunities now. He's guarding Jackson. David uh, Jackson is more his size. Let's see if they, if uh, Utah matches up with Bradley. Apparently, uh, they were checking for blood on a player. Jackson with Reed all over him. Inside broken up by the Razorbacks. Thompson trying to come out with it. Thompson does save the ball, though. Reed underneath to Wallace. It's a five-point game. This is Arkansas's pace. This is right where they want to be. Wallace the steal. Bradley almost had a look, but the big guy closed out on him. 
That was a loyal victory for Bradley. He almost had a look. That's how tight the defense has been on him. Look at him right here. And always a big guy, so he can't shoot over. Thompson. And the shoot. Thompson over Jensen and cleared by Dolian. 48-43 Utah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my and the God. Walk. Metala called for the walk with 10.03 left. He melted in his shoes, Metala. Well, Arkansas is going to get the most loose balls because they've got the quickness team-wise. They get you in that up-tempo. Now we are getting a 20-second timeout taken by Arkansas. The last time we had a 20-second timeout taken, it was about a three-and-a-half-minute break in the game. So we'll see if uh, this is, in fact, uh, just a 20. One tick inside of 10 minutes left. Now, Bradley, he's got the quick trigger, but when you've got a guy 6'11 on you and you're just 6'3", it's going to be really hard to get a good look. And that has been the case. They've been very physical with Bradley. They frustrated him, and he has not been able to get untracked in this game. See, now Metala picks him up. They let him go through all that action off the ball, and they just wait and send a big guy at him when he comes out. They're treating him like a baton. They're just handing him off to the next big guy and saying, hey, you want to get a shot off? You're going to get it off over a much taller defender. Nine fifty-nine for regulation. Here's our CBS Sports Line stat of the game. Arkansas with nine steals and Utah with one. Actually, this comeback hasn't happened that quickly. Three seconds. Oh, it's no, gonna be a foul hold. on yeah. Metala. Metala inside, battling. Three fouls on him. Johnson coming back in, number 31. Metala goes out. He was battling Landis Williams, who started the other night but only played eight minutes against Nebraska. Williams into the game right now, a 70% free throw shooter. They need him to knock down both free throws. He hasn't been on the line today and scoreless in the game. He's got the first one. That Razorback comeback continuing. Think we're going to have a finish like that first game, West Virginia Cincinnati? I'm looking at Arkansas. They look to be the stronger team. They look to be the team with the most stamina right now. This is the same thing they did to Nebraska the other night. And they not only came from 10 down to win, but they won going away as it turned out. I mean, Kareem Reed right now, ball hawking, he looks as fresh as he did when the game first started. Arkansas had scored 13 of the last 16. Blues. Jensen trying to save. Miller has it. 18 to shoot. Doliak with a pitch out to Jackson. Eight on the shot clock. Miller in deep to Doliak. Three to shoot. We're going to have to hoist it. And Johnson does off the glass. A big one. That may be a critical basket for Utah because for a moment, it allows them to exhale. They're back to a five-point lead. Tariq Wallace. Utah has uh, slumped off of their defense. They're not defending out on the perimeter. Except with the shooters. And the shooter of the game right now is Wallace. And he's got another tall guy on him. Reed is fouled. And Reed will have a one and one. Miller called for the foul. Andre Miller with his second. Don't forget, coming up, 644 Eastern, Illinois State against Arizona in the West. In the East, Indiana and Yukon at 655 Eastern. Right now, Kareem Reed feels that he can take Andre Miller. Miller's wearing down defensively. Wind it. 
With the shot clock winding down, he called for a spread on the floor. Let me take my guy one-on-one. -on -one. Was able to get penetration and draw the foul. Drew Hansen has come back for Utah, number 34. He has four fouls. Miller has played well, but he has had to play so hard, and you got to wonder about his stamina and endurance at this point of the game. Reed, a 74% free throw shooter. He makes them both. Walker in for Arkansas, number 41. Reed going out to get a bit of a rest. It's a three-point game with 837 left. Jensen in the backcourt, Johnson in the backcourt. Bradley guarding him. Bradley has to be careful. He's got the four. In the double team. It ends up in the hands of Doliak. Hansen pressured by Walker. 15 to shoot. And Jensen shoots the three. That took some good. His first points of the game. That really explains why it took good. He hadn't scored, obviously had no rhythm, but that was a big shot. And now he's on Wallace, their three-point threat. Walker. Twelve on the shot clock. That was Williams going inside, a loose ball into the hands of Doliak, and now Utah in transition. That he went over the back of Bradley. A foul on Miller. Predictable. How many times have you seen a guy go in, miss that little short shot? Always. He'll go over the back to try and get a second opportunity. Miller felt he should have had the first one. But this, on the previous possession, Jensen. Big. Well, Arkansas, as you look at the reaction on the Utah bench, even the guys on the bench are big. Arkansas with a chance to get Pat Bradley off. This is a 90% free throw shooter. Scoreless today. He has the bonus. And you know what? It's funny. Rick Majerus yesterday called this guy maybe the best shooter we will have faced all year. Loved his touch, his release. But then he comes out and pretty much shuts him up. Two free throws by Bradley. A four-point game working. Rick Majerus and the Utes have the lead. 7.37 left. Recently, we heard about this one Saturn owner who was taking a trip in Boise, where Utah leads Arkansas 53-49. Clark, we were just talking about this. The Razorbacks tending to hang around and hang around, and that's not good news for an opponent. We talked about it at halftime. The Razorbacks like to pressure. They needed to get some shots to go down so they could get into their full-court pressure. So they're right where they want to be, both teams over the limit in fouls. So turnovers and free-throw shooting, as well as rebounding, probably the factors that and, go down the And stretch. Coach, as we talked about before, Arkansas has trailed earlier in this tournament. They were down at one point by nine, I believe, to Nebraska. Nebraska. And I love how hard they play. Gosh, are they playing hard, and so is Utah. We have a heck of a ball game here. And we shouldn't count it out yet because, as we mentioned, one-pointers are becoming a little more <laughs> common. We've, we've already had, what, five of them as opposed to four all of last tournament a year ago. And the winner will see West Virginia in a frenetic type game. But again, Arkansas in good shape, I think, as long as they can continue to keep this game at kind of a frenetic pace. Utah, on the other hand, wants to make sure they try to continue to establish tougher, Doliak. Tougher to catch up with Rick Majerus and the Utes, who are very good in the basics. Let's get you back to Boise, Idaho, as the action resumes. Well, we've got the table set here at Boise for a great finish. Upcoming games, Illinois State, the Redbirds taking on Arizona. They'll start at 644 Eastern. And then later tonight in the East, Indiana and UConn. And then the... Coming up tonight on CBS. Points off turnovers. Arkansas, big and 13 love in the second half. Got a call before the ball was put in play. Foul on Walker. 17 fouls on Arkansas. Not good. Walker with his first. Not good from an Arkansas standpoint. And uh, Hanson on the free throw line. You know, Arkansas comes into this game forcing 22 turnovers per. 
Utah's up to 18. And, and Utah would love to be able to get the ball inside to their big people, use advantage, take advantage of that size. But because of the quickness and, and the pace of this game right now that Arkansas is preventing, they're not having a chance to do that any longer. Drew Hampson making the free throw. And adding to it with the bonus, a six-point lead. For Utah, seven and a half minutes left. Bradley trying to operate on Hanson. See, Bradley's a catch-and-shoot guy. So even if you bring a man up on him and set a screen on the ball, chances are it's not going to help him because he can't really put it on the floor and shoot his and come up out of a shot. He can't really shoot it off the dribble. He needs time. He has had no time. Arkansas turns it over on a three-second violation. Back to Utah with a six-point lead. Johnson handling the ball against pressure. He got in the air with nowhere to go. The ball was knocked out of bounds by Arkansas. Johnson can handle the basketball, but you know, when you got Kareem Reed right there talking you every step of the way, it becomes very difficult. Because you can't wait to pick it up off the dribble. Yeah. That little guy. Well, you got to notice where he is and where your cutting teammates are, and it makes it very difficult. You got to know where Reed is. Getting inside is Miller. A big shot. Andre Miller. That was a, a very nice effort, Miller. And he's been able to do that on numerous occasions in this game. Split the defense, get into the paint area, elevate and get his own shot. You're hearing it now from the Utah crowd. Adebayo with a fake. Recovered by Bradley. They've got 17 to shoot. Everybody in the arena knows that Bradley's the shooter. Especially the guys wearing those white uniforms. You're right. Reed was fouled in the act of shooting. Look, once Miller is able to get into the paint area, at that point, he's very confident with that shot. He shot it on numerous occasions in this game and comes away with a huge goof to give Utah just a little bit more breathing room. Eight points. And Reed trying to do something about that as Miller has picked up his fourth foul. Reed shooting two. That's ten team fouls on Utah. And hey, we've got 6.25 to go. If they lose Miller, then they're really going to have some problems ball handling. And Hanson's playing with four fouls also. So Kareem Reed makes it a six-point game again. Miller behind the back splits the double team. Britton Johnson, 31. Miller guarded by Reed. Just about six minutes left. Doling act. Out of bounds to Arkansas with 555 remaining. Razorbacks on the attack. They can cut it to four. Arkansas was able to double down on Doliak, gave him no passing angle. He turned the basketball over, threw it out of bounds. Wallace. Uh -uh. Oh, out of bio on the tip. Out of bio above the rim. Everybody else is stationary, flat-footed on the floor for Utah. Out of bio, big tip in. Miller getting inside again. That's twice here in the late stages that Miller has scored like that. He's trying to take this game into his own hands offensively for Utah. Doing a good job. 18 points for Andre Miller. Back to a six-point lead for Utah. They came in. Arkansas did worrying about Doliak and Metala, and it's Miller that has hurt him down the stretch here. Just about five minutes for the game. Kareem Reed with 11 on the shot clock. There's Bradley with an open look. And he nails the three. It took 35 minutes for Bradley to get a look. Bradley nearly took the charge on Jensen. Doliak, Johnson. That was picture perfect. You couldn't draw it up any better than that. How to attack full court pressure. Excellent pass from Doliak. And Britton Johnson, their freshman, has a career-high eight points in the game. 
22nd timeout taken. 4.35 left. This Pat Bradley trying to work his way free. Never has a guy had to wait so long and work so hard to get an open shot. Finally, Bradley finds an opening. But this is Utah on the answer. They kick it up to Doliak, who gives it to Jensen, who's streaking. Johnson able to knock it down right in the face of Adebayo, who smartly avoided a foul. There was no way he was going to stop that dunk. The Utes with a five-point lead. 4.35 left. It's been a good one here in the second half. After Arkansas got down big early. Bradley. Now he's guarded by Hanson. Reed had it slapped away by Jensen. Bradley sidesteps the defense to pass out of bounds. It was knocked out by Utah with six to shoot. The Razorbacks come in. Reed looking around that big player, Jensen, but he got it in play to Bradley, who shoots over Doliak. Had to shoot that to block, to, to avoid the shot clock. And again, it's Miller going to the hoop to score. The basket is good, and he was fouled. Miller's had a sensational game. He's had a wonderful game. Taking it all the way. This has been his answer to Arkansas pressure more times than not. And the foul was on Pat Bradley. That's his fifth. He's gone. Joliet likes it, and many people in this crowd, a lot of Utah fans here, they like what they're seeing right now. So Bradley fouls out with only five points, and all five came lately. 4.05 left. Miller on the free throw line trying to complete the three-point play. Helpless feeling now, Bradley. He's got to hope that his teammates can come up with some plays to help extend his junior season here. Miller missed it, but the follow by Jensen is good. That's huge. With 3.57 left. Back to a nine-point lead for the Utes. Hood. Yep, Hood keeping Arkansas in contention. That was important because that gives you your confidence back just for the moment. And it keeps Arkansas within single digits. Andre Miller being guarded by Hood. Utah trying to take some time off the clock. 18 to shoot. Doliak surrounded, out to Hanson. Ten on the shot clock. Doliak. And it's tipped to Adebayo. Here we go. A hoop makes it a five-point game. Got to be careful with this guy. And that's Wallace. He came up short with the three try. Miller on the advance. And again, Miller scores off penetration. They haven't, they haven't quite realized yet, Arkansas, that you got to make Miller pick the basketball up. You cannot allow him to break the free throw line area. Timeout time taken. The Utah fans are sensing it now with 2.41 left. They have taken a nine-point lead. Miller has 22 points in the game. And all of his recent offensive activity coming, attacking the basket. One for regulation, Utah with the lead. They have withstood an Arkansas charge. These two teams playing for the right to meet upstart West Virginia.